Hi, this is Pat Fiorello. I'm a professional fine artist and I'm coming to you today from my studio to share a little bit about oil painting supplies. Um, this uh, short video is for my students in an upcoming oil painting for beginners class and I wanted to give a general overview of some of the materials involved um, in oil painting. Um, you don't need all of these to get started, but I want people to have kind of an overview of everything that's available and part of oil painting so they have an understanding of that. Um, so the first thing we get started with is what do you paint on? So let's talk about canvases. Um, there are different types of surfaces that people will paint on, but for the most part, um, paint oil painters are painting on canvases. So often you can buy a canvas like this at your local art supply store or online, and the canvas is already stretched on these stretcher um, bars so that it's, it's taut and you can paint on this surface. The surface has a little bit of a, a spring and a bounce to it, and um, but this is a, a great easy way to get started. Um, they come in a thinner format, uh, which people will typically get framed. And they come in a thicker, uh, with thicker bars on the side, which people call gallery wrap. And um, that can often be hung just on the wall without any framing. So some people prefer that. The canvases come in a lot of different forms of quality. There are some that are cotton, there are some that are um, primed with acrylics, there are some that are primed with oils. Uh, the ones primed with oils tend to be a little bit more costly. Um, I prefer them, they're a, a little bit smoother uh, surface and tend to um, have the paint not sink in as much. Um, there are things you can do to treat some of these oil primed canvases by put a coat of gesso over them, sand them, and prepare the surface um, if you want to get a little bit less absorption into the canvas itself. But um, those are certainly a viable option for getting started. Um, there are artists who buy the canvas on rolls or linen on roll and they will actually make the stretcher bar and, and create the uh, canvas themselves. But for starting out, um, you don't really need to get involved in that. Just get something off the shelf that'll be inexpensive, easy to work with. And as you grow over time, uh, you may want to upgrade to some of the oil primed uh, linen surfaces. In addition to those canvases, which I said have a little spring to them, there are also panels that you can get like this. And they're very thin. And um, the panels are hard, you know, they're a harder surface. They don't have the springiness of those stretcher bar canvases. And um, this one is a gesso board and has a nice surface. It's a nice kind of slick surface. Um, I, I like to use this sometimes. The colors uh, stay pretty clean and, and bright on that. But there's, again, many different sizes, shapes. You can get rectangles, squares. Uh, get from you know very small like five by seven all the way up to you know several feet by several feet so there are a, a wide range of options but if you're starting out um, you know I think either the small canvases or the small canvas panels are um, a great choice personally I prefer to use the panels for a couple of reasons one I do like uh, the harder surface to work on. For some reason, I just like the feel of the brush on that rather than the springiness of the canvas. That's totally a personal choice. You'll ask other people and they have the opposite opinion. So you have to try them and see what you like. And then the other thing for me, since I'm painting quite a bit, um, these are very thin and, and easier for me to store. Um, as you start having a lot of these around, you know, storage becomes um, an issue. So um, there's several benefits for me and, and at, at this point, I'd say I'm painting on these types of form, uh, uh, formats exclusively. So uh, those are the canvases. Uh, let's talk a little bit about brushes. So there are, you know, many sizes and shapes of brushes. Uh, as you can see, you know, artists tend to collect tons of them, way more than they actually need or use, but that's part of the fun of painting, having those brushes. Uh, some of the brushes will be flat, they'll have a, like a flat head. Some will be kind of a filbert that's got a little bit of a rounded head. Um, some 
This one is kind of an inexpensive watercolor type brush. I, I use it for my oil paintings sometime just to lay in uh, the underpainting. It's inexpensive and if they don't last too long, I can just toss them out. Um, there are some kind of longer hair brushes. So each of these brushes is gonna make a little bit of a different stroke. Um, again, I would say I'd start out maybe with some bristle brushes um, and some maybe synthetic brushes. And if you have uh, you know, a flat and a, a, a filbert, just try a few of those out. And uh, the bristle brushes tend to be a little um, kind of scratchier, but they will leave a defined stroke because they're a little bit rougher. Some of the synthetic brushes are a little bit softer hair and they um, kind of leave a little bit more of a blended mark. However, you can leave brush marks with this if you're using enough paint and actually um, you know, lay it right on the surface. So there's a variety of brushes. There are different hairs. Um, you, know, you can get natural sable hair brushes. You don't really need to uh, venture into that at this point. They you know, can be expensive. Start out with some basic um, inexpensive brushes. There's also a variety of sizes of brushes. And again, it depends on the size of the panel uh, or canvas that you're working on. Um, you know, if I'm doing this small of a canvas, I really don't need this big of a brush. Um, so, but if you're you know, doing a four by six painting, you're gonna need something large like that. But uh, let's say this is a number six um, a filbert brush. That's kind of a nice size to get started with. And maybe uh, number eight or 10, uh, a flat hair brush. And just start with a couple of brushes and see what you use, what you enjoy, the marks that they make. And then over time, you'll I'm sure expand your collection. The other thing that's handy to have is a palette knife for a couple of things. One, for scraping paint off your palette um, and also for actually making marks. Uh, so also for scraping paint off your canvas. Sometimes you put something down and you're like, mm, I'm not sure about that. You can actually use the palette knife to scrape off your canvas and get back to the surface so that you can apply uh, paint cleanly. If you're trying to paint and pile on paint on top of something that you don't like, um, you're just gonna get messy and you're, you're gonna get frustrated. So it's easier to just scrape off what's there and then rebuild what you want. If you wanna make thin lines, um, this edges is also helpful, a little highlights, the tip is also helpful. And also, as I said, scraping off paint to clean off your palette, it's useful for that. And mixing paint. Um, I uh, prefer to mix paint with a palette knife than my brushes because it keeps the brushes cleaner and it keeps my paint mixtures cleaner so that the brushes aren't bringing paint that might have been from you know, a previous stroke into a new color. I do like the palette knives that have this bend here as opposed to the flat ones um, because this, if you are mixing, uh, you're not gonna get the, the palette knife into the paint. You've got more room to maneuver with that little um, bend there. Um, let's talk about paints. So um, you know, the paints you know, basically come in, uh, you know, the standard size tubes, the larger size tubes, um, I prefer the larger size tubes just for paints that I use a lot of, like ultramarine blue or titanium white. The other colors, you know, these are fine and, and they'll last you, you know, quite a while. There are student gray paints, which are a little less expensive, but they've got some fillers in there. Uh, when you're starting out, that's fine to get started with those. Uh, but over time, you might want to upgrade to the artist paints um, that are, um, you know, a, a cleaner, uh, clearer colors. So um, speaking of colors, there are a variety of colors. Now, what do you need to get started? Um, I, you could start with four simple tubes, titanium white, a, a red, um, an, a blue, and a yellow. And with those four, you can mostly make me most colors. There are a few kind of you know, high key pinks and things like that that are a little harder and it's, it, you can get an actual pink out of a tube that would fit that, but you really can range, get a range of colors 
with those four tubes. And it's actually not a bad idea to get started like that because it will force you to learn to mix the colors that you want rather than always rely on the perfect color in a tube, which you know might not be there. So, um, but there are dozens and dozens of colors. Over time, you might want to expand and, and try others. I'll leave a list of suggested um, colors to start with. Be, if you want to get a little bit beyond just the basic four, that's a good um, starter palette. Um, speaking of palettes, uh, I will show you my palette here. Uh, if you can see that, it is uh, a glass. This is actually an old watercolor frame. And um, I've put out, um, I put out the paints right on here. And then at the end of the day, I either scrape them off, I either scrape them off or I have these little paint saver covers that I put on. Um, they don't last forever, but they'll give you a little bit of an extended couple of days. Um, but you can see I'll you know, put out quite a bit of paint that might be more than I need. Um, so these covers let me hold on to it a little bit longer. Um, people do other things to try and save their paints. Um, you know, some people put them in the freezer and other things. I really don't do anything like that. I just leave them here under those covers. And if it's a long time till I get back and paint again, I'll just scrape it off and put out fresh paint. My attitude is your time is more important than the paint or your time is more valuable than the cost of the paint. So if I have to scrape off the paint and put out new, it's better, um, you'll end up with a better painting and it's just gonna be more enjoyable for you to paint with fresh paint. Um, different brands, there are many different brands of paint. Uh, there's some very you know high-end handmade paints that are, are pretty expensive. And then there's the basic brands which um, you know, kind of the mass brands like Winsor Newton and Holbein and Rembrandt and Gamblin and all of those are fine. Um, there's no reason you can't intermingle brands. If you pick one brand, you know, like say Winsor Newton, you don't have to use all their paints. You can certainly mix and match uh, other brands. And you may find you like a, a color from a particular brand more than another. And, you know, over time you'll get to know your own personal preferences. Uh, Let's see, what else? Let's talk about, uh, oh, before we go on the, this is another handy tool for uh, paint. You put your paint tube in here and roll it and you can squeeze more paint out. So it's kind of like having um, your toothpaste wringer. It squeezes out from the bottom so you get the maximum use out of uh, the paint that's in there. So the, use the metal one for um, oil paints. I have a plastic one from my watercolor and it's not strong enough for these metal, metal oil paint for some reason, but this is a great tool to have. It's, um, it, you know, it'll cost a bit, but it will pay back in all the paint that you will get out of these tubes. So it's just called a tube ringer. Um, other things I keep handy, uh, these wipes, baby wipes or whatever, as you're painting and you need to, you know, clean your hands, you can clean with these immediately to get paint off and then, you know, continue on to go wash them. But um, they're really handy to have around. Some people wear gloves if they're concerned about getting the pigments into their skin. Um, I tend not to do that, but, um, you know, and just keep a lot of these and paper towels around. Um, I do like Viva paper towels. I do like the absorbency of them. And uh, what I do is I just rip them apart and then uh, off the roll and then I cut them in half and I have them in a pile right near my um, easel. And then I can just, you know, pick up one at a time and, you know, clean a brush in between changing colors. Um, there are also some other materials um, one is Gamsol. Now, Gamsol is um, by the Gamblin Company. It's, you know, Gamsol, Gamblin Solvent. It's a solvent, it's a paint thinner, and it's odorless. So, um, you know, back in the days, people were using turpentine. There's probably still people using turpentine, but a lot of people had a bad reaction to the odors of turpentine. So over time, different companies came out with substitutes that still dissolve the paint, um, but um, were less, you know, kind of, toxic and, and less odors. This is what Gamsol looks like. 
So if you are going to a class and they say, you know, bring mineral spirits, you can get regular min mineral spirits or you can get this odorless mineral spirits. And I like to use this. Um, I don't use a lot of this. Um, some people use this and e between every color change, they're swishing their brush in the odorless mineral spirits. Um, I found um, doing that, I was doing it too much. And so I was really, this is a paint thinner. You don't want to continually be thinning out your paint. So um, I kind of use this judiciously. If I, um, when I change colors from, you know, color to color and I'm using the same brush, then I'll just take a pa paper towel and really wipe it out cleanly. If I'm going, say, from uh, alizarin crimson, which is a really rich red, and then I'm gonna go use white, I will just get another brush. Uh, there's no way I can clean that right here well enough that I'm not gonna have some of that red sneak into the white and all of a sudden I'm working with pink when I really wanted white. So um, I just keep a lot of brushes around and I prefer to use clean brushes if I'm gonna make a radical change in color. If I'm going from yellow to orange, it's not such a big deal, but if I'm going across the color wheel or going to include white, um, you know, that changes things a lot. Uh, you can, you know, have just a simple like metal cup that you put some mineral spirits in. Um, I learned the hard way not to put in a paper cup because it will eat through that. But some of these little metal cups or a, a china type cup would be fine. Um, the other time that I use the Gamsol is for cleaning my brushes at the end of the day. So say I've used, you know, I might use seven or eight brushes. Once I'm done at the end of the day, I will clean them all off with a paper towel. I'll put them in the bigger cup of uh, Gamsol. So you might get, have a metal cup or a, an old glass jar or something, put the Gamsol in, put the brushes in there, let them sit for a little bit, and then take them out again and dry out the Gamsol. And then I take them and I, I clean, I wanna make sure they're super clean. Some people aren't so fussy about that, but I put them then in a, a jar of uh, Murphy's oil, which will actually help pull the paint out again. And then um, after that, I'll rinse them out just with your Dawn dishwashing. And then I lay them flat to dry. And you know, I try to reshape the edges if they're, if they're squished. I'll try to reshape the, the edges so that they come out and they feel like new. So, um, And you can see I've been using these brushes for a while, but I clean them very well so they maintain their, their shape and they don't have a lot of frayed edges or anything like that. Uh, there is another product that I really do like, uh, this Jack's Linseed Studio Soap. Uh, so sometimes I'll just dip a brush in here too, and you'd be surprised after you wash them with all this, there's still more coming out. So um, it's important to get the paint out at the uh, to me the, at the end of the day because it, if it gets caked up, you know, if it gets all caked up in here, it's going to be very stiff and you want this to be flexible. You want to be able to make, you know, marks on your paper, on your canvas. And if it's stiff, uh, like a stick, you're not going to be able to have the spring and the shape making that you can do with this brush. So I really try to take very good care of my brushes. This is your, your main tool that you're making your marks with. So it's important to have, you know, keep them clean and keep them flexible for their optimum uh, performance. Um, one, two other things related to cleaning. You saw that I have the glass palette here. Um, at the end of the day, I want to get this palette cleaned up. I don't want to come back the next day and have a pile of paint dried out on my glass palette here. So um, I'll use either, you know, something like this that you can get at Ace Hardware. It's just a disposable um, razor, for like a scraper that people will scrape uh, paint off a window or something like that. Uh, they come in different sizes and, and shapes, but um, that's perfect because I'll just scrape the paint off my glass and just wipe it off with a paper towel and I get most of the paint off that way. And then I take some denatured alcohol and um, I will put a little bit of that, that on the palette, not you know away from any remaining 
piles of paint that I might want to reuse, but in the center mixing area, I'll put some of this and wipe it up with a, a paper towel, and that glass is like brand new again, so it's totally clean for the next time that I'm going to come in and paint. Uh, I did one other thing about the palette that I didn't mention. I prefer to use the glass. Um, there are also paper palettes that you can buy, and they're disposable. Um, sometimes for beginning students, I will use those just so that they don't have to uh, get the bigger uh, palette. Um, but there are some drawbacks to that. I don't find that it mixes as well because like, it beads up a little bit on that paper palette. And, um, you know, so, you know, that is a little bit of an, e uh, an issue. I prefer the working on the glass surface. It's easier to clean up the glass surface. And um, so ultimately that's what, uh, you know, I'd like you to be moving towards. Uh, again, this is just an old picture frame and I bought a piece of gray foam core and put that inside where the picture would normally be in the picture frame. And what that does, it gives me a middle value. Like a, it's not black, it's not white. I am comparing the colors that I'm mixing to a middle value gray. So it helps me to say, hmm, if I'm shooting for a middle gray on here, am I, on target, am I too light, am I too dark? If I'm shooting for something dark and it's the same value as that gray that's in the palette, then I know, you know what, it's not dark enough, I need to push it further. So it just gives you a little bit of a way to calibrate your lights and darks as you're mixing colors. Um, let's see, varnishing. Um, at the end of, you know, as I complete a painting, I will let it dry flat for, um, you know, a number of weeks, um, and then um, I want to varnish it. Now, the kind of old school thinking was you had to wait at least six months to varnish. However, with this Gamvar, and it's also come from the gambling company, um, this varnish you can apply as soon as the paint is, you know, kind of dry to the touch. So. I don't actually go in there and touch the painting, but I kind of, you know, get a sense if I see that it's, it's looks dry enough. And then I will put on a coat of this. I do have a brush that I'll use just for this. I don't use this for painting. And then I just put on a thin coat, you know, go both ways and make sure I've got everything covered. A very thin coat of varnish. That helps to protect uh, the painting from dust and, and other things over time. So it's a good way to sort of complete your painting process. But that's after the painting is dry. Some people that use a lot of the thick impasto paint, it may take longer for their paint to dry. So you've got to sort of judge is your painting dry based on how you're painting, the colors you're using, how thick you you know, how thick it is and how much paint you're you've got applied on the surface. I have a, a couple of other small tools that I like to keep handy. Um, one is just Q-tips. Um, sometimes I'll have you know paint down and then I'll want to change a shape or lift out an area that I want you know clean canvas to come back. And I will take one of the Q-tips, just dip it in the Gamsol, the solvent, and then I will rub out a little place on, um, you know, to recapture sort of the canvas. So that's handy for sort of recapturing small spaces. Also, I love this Kemper tool, K-E-M-P-E-R. You can buy it on Amazon for about, you know, eight to ten dollars. Um, I don't know what it's really for. It might be for some kind of sculpture or something. But it's got a tip here where sometimes I use that for my signature if I have a painting with a dark. Uh, area on the bottom, I'll just actually put my signature in with that. Um, and it's also got this slanty side, and I can, you know, say I made a vase that's too large, and I say, you know, I really want that to be smaller. I can kind of reshape it, or if I've lost my drawing as I've got the paint down and I'm kind of need to find my way again, I can refine my drawing with this, and then continue on to paint. So it's really handy, um, handy tool. Uh, so I would recommend that. If you don't have that, um, I've also taken an old brush and put it in the pencil sharpener and it gives me a little point here and I can, again, scrape into the canvas to refine my drawing, to sign, uh, to make a line, you know. So sometimes just having some of these tools where you could lift off is are helpful to have. And I 
think that's about it. So um, anyway, I hope this was helpful. I gave you a little bit of an overview of the materials. There are way more than this, way more options, but I think this is enough to get you started so that when you go into the art supply store, you understand a little bit about what's there and what's available. And it seems like a lot of stuff. Um, just to get started, you really can start with you know, a simple canvas, four tubes of paint, a couple of brushes, and you know, maybe a little solvent. Um, and paper towels, of course. So I think that probably would be enough to get started and those paper palettes. And then over time, as you get more and more into it, you can um, you know, upgrade and expand and just have fun with this. You know, go experiment, try new things and see what you like. Uh, you know, every artist is a little bit different in what they like, the colors they like, the materials that they like to use, the brushes they like to use. And um, so you'll find uh, your own way. So in this beginning stages, just be open. There is no perfect materials. Um, really what's more important is kind of your uh, passion for the art and your vision of what you want to create. And honestly, um, you can create what you want, uh, you know, probably with a single brush. Like if you were on a desert island and had one brush left, you could probably do a lot with that. So there's, don't get hung up on like, well, what's the right brush for that shape and this? You can do a lot with any brush. And, um, you know, that's part of the learning experience to see how do I manipulate this brush to get the shapes that I want. So, um, have fun with all of that. If I can help in any way, please reach out either on social media or patfiorello.com and I'm happy to help you and uh, just have fun and uh, I hope you have a, a great experience as you learn to oil paint. Take care. Bye.